So in this session, we are going to learn what is the WCD ePortal, how to navigate the ePortal, how to save resources from the ePortal, and how to share resources with your learners and fellow colleagues in a more efficient way as we are moving from the old school way of teaching into a more new school way of teaching. As COVID has taught us that we're going to have to adapt with the times and those times is using technology to our advantage, right? And then we will also do a collaborative effort. We will create a hyper document together. Right, the hyper document, I'll explain it later on, but just keep it in the back of your mind that you're going to be needing a uh, connectivity internet and you're going to be needing a desktop or your laptop to participate in this activity. And then we're going to talk about how um, technology will integrate with the ASMR method. And then we'll end off with some feedback and just some general chat about what we have learned in this session. Right, so let's begin. Apologies that again. It can be used on a desktop or laptop, but it's also compatible for cell phones, right? So I know most of our schools do not have the technology or the finances to have all the learners' laptops or every classroom to have a desktop, right? But it can be used on a cell phone and it will work perfectly the same as if it was being done on a laptop. And the great thing is that the WCD portal is zero rated. Zero rated meaning that it does not take any data, right? The only time it will take any data is when you are downloading content from the WCD portal. But surfing the portal, going onto the different sites of the portal does not take any data. Right? Everyone still with me? Okay. Yes, we are. Okay. Right. So now I'm going to show you how to go onto the WCET portal, which is quite simple. It's the same way as you would if you are typing in a website for say Instagram or Facebook or whatever you are desired. Right. So like any other time you would want to search a website, you open up your desired web browser, it can be Microsoft Edge, but I like to use Chrome, Google, right? Then you go into the search bar. And you see, I already searched it previously. You type in the WCDE portal. Right, and it will open up to the search. And you see the first uh, result will be the WCDE portal. You click on it. And it should open up to the WCDE portal main page. Right. But as educators, we like to save time and we don't have much time on our hands. Especially since the site is zero rated, there's a Nico trick to help you not having to type in the email, the web address each time and having to first get data so that you can get onto the site. And that is called bookmarking, right? So bookmarking is like the word says, you are basically saving the page on your own page of your web browser. It's like when you have a physical book in your hand and you put in a small piece of paper to save the place so that you can continue the next time you want to read that book, right? So there's two ways that you can do it. You can either pick the star here in the middle, right there, to open up and make the website the bookmark, or you can do the quick way, which is press control, and then you press the little D on your keyboard, and it should open up as well. Right, then all you have to do is either press done and it will show up on your home page. Or if you're like me and you love to be organized and you will bookmark from many websites, then you can create a folder with different websites in that folder. So you can stay organized. I've created a folder for all my WCD documents and websites that are called the WCD folder. Right, and then I will just press done. And then when you go to the next, start to open up a new tab, then you'll see it will pop up here on top by the banner. So the next time you open up your web browser, then it will just be there instead of you having to type in the URL code or search for the website again. Right, everyone still with me? Right, so now we're on the WCDE portal, right? And as you can see here, there's many things that 
could be a benefit to you and learn, such as past papers and memos, exam timetable, NSC, FAQs, all of those things. But we're not going to get into every single aspect. We are just going to show how it could benefit you as an educator. All right. So here on the top is different drop down menus, right? So you see this for learners, documents, for parents, such as the SGP election, SGP training, curriculum, weekly lesson plans for parents, all of those things. And then the middle one is for us educators, right? So here's different things ranging from assessments to curriculum help, right down to policies and even e-training to help develop and further your skills. Okay, so that does not stop there. So you don't actually have to just access the data. You can also become a contributor. So you can also upload all those resources that you have created over the years that you have mastered, that you feel that it helped every single one of your students to pass your subjects. Then share it with your fellow colleagues all over the Western Cape and become a contributor to the site. So what you have to do to become a contributor, firstly, you have to register on the site, but most people are registered because we have a e the link. And then you would just scroll down right to this green banner right here. And the small button would say contribute now, and you would press on that button and it will open up into a new tab, which will allow you to contribute and share all of your resources. But a disclaimer, most of your resources first goes through a trial period where someone from the WCD, someone that's been uh, maybe an e-advisor or a curriculum advisor will first go through your content to check if it is aligned with the curriculum and if it is helpful before it will be published, right? But the contributor um, side has been revised to suit the Popeye Act so that your intellectual property is not stolen or anything like that. Because I know a lot of people feel like the IP is very important and it is very important. Okay, so that's one way. Or you could just sign in and it will give you the option to either sign in as a normal educator or to sign in as a contributor and then you could follow the same steps. Everyone still with me? Right, I guess so. Yes, we are. Right. So now that you have the basic overview of the e-portal, right? There are two ways that you can use the e-portal. You can either go to the drop down menu and go to a specific topic, or you could use this magnifying glass here in the corner. Because the WCD e-portal has thousands and thousands of resources, you are going to have to be specific when you are searching for a specific resource to use in the classroom. Otherwise, you're just going to get lost and drowned and feel overwhelmed. So there's two ways that you can search for resources. The one way is to either type in a keyword, so a key topic that you're looking for, or something that that's had to do with maybe a PowerPoint or a video. I'm an English educator, as I said, so I'm always looking for resources on language. So, for example, I'm looking for a resource on adjectives. Right, then you will just type it in the search bar and then you'll press go and it will open up different resources that are related to adjectives. But that's only one way, right? The other way would be to search by a grade and subject. Because if you're just searching by keywords, it will show you different results from grade R straight up to grade 12. And I'm just looking for example for grade 10, English home language, right? Then I'll use the second part of the search bar to refine my search. So basically to minimize the amount of resources that does not relate to the subject or the grade that I am looking for. So for interest sake, we'll say I'm looking for grade 12. Uh, subject would be English home language. Let's go. 
and they will open up all the resources that relate to grade 12 English home language. So instead of just um, displaying resources from grade R to grade 12, it will display resources only aimed at grade 12 students. The next thing would be to either filter by a subtopic. So now you have all the resources, right? And you feel like this is too much as well. I'm just looking for something specific. So then you will go here by filter subtopic. So right down here is all the subtopics that are used on the lesson planning and on the ATPs. So you can refine your search even more by clicking on one of these subtopics. And if you are only looking for a certain type of resource, say a document, an audio book, a video, then you would refine your search even more by clicking one of these types right here. And then obviously, you could also change the language. So either English is Zulu or Afrikaans, but I do not think that's important right now. So for the sake, I'm looking for something of poetry. There's 16 resources there. So the numbers in brackets tell you how many resources there are for the subtopics. That's poetry. Right, and it will pop open all the different resources that relate to poetry. But there are 16 and I feel like, oh, 16 is still too much. I do not have enough time to go through all 16. Then this sort by year will basically sort all the resources into different categories, ranging from relevance, popularity, the latest resources, the ones that uploaded the latest, and then uh, alphabetically as well. So I want the one that's the most popular. So I click on popularity. Just waiting for it to open up. Right. And now it has arranged it into the most popular resource right down to the least popular resource. OK, right. Any questions yet? So everyone's still fine. Now we'll go into saving resources. So I found this resource right here, The Garden of Love by William Blake, which is a poem that's currently being done by our grade 12s. And I'm looking for this resource to help my learners analyze the poem even further. All you have to do is click on the resource. And then it will open up in a new tab. The great thing about the WCD portal is that it provides a preview of the document before you download it. Which is great, especially if you're trying to save data or you do not have much connectivity to work with, especially in schools where there's a lot of load shedding or there's a lack of resources, right? As you can see here. So there are three ways to download these documents. The one way would be the the old school way, which is to download the document onto your desktop. So basically into a folder on your computer or your laptop. But that is basically the old school way of doing things. You might not need internet to display the content to the learners, but you are going to need a projector to display to the learners, or you're going to have to physically make copies or analyze it on your own and make it into an easier draft for them to understand. Right. The second way that you can do it is to either share the e-portal link. What I mean by share the e-portal link is the link here on top and copy and paste it in a WhatsApp group or a Teams group or in a different folder. It will help in the long run, but learners could miss the intended content, right? Because you're going to paste the link in the group. They are maybe going to go onto the link. But around the line, they get confused or they see the fancy buttons here on top and they do not go into the desired content that you shared with them. Right? And it's a long and unnecessary process as sometimes links become corrupted or you type something wrong while you um, copy the link onto the WhatsApp group or onto the Teams group. And now they are asking you 50 or 60 times, what is the link, sir or man? Right? So, what we want to encourage you is to start using the cloud, right? So the cloud is a storing and accessing tool that allows you to save documents on the internet instead of on your computer. 
So basically it saves the documents on the external safe. So it's the same as saving documents on your desktop, it's just that it will be saved on the internet. The ones that are most commonly used in schools and by the WCD is Google Drive or at my school at Parai, we use OneDrive to interact with our learners. There are many advantages, even though there's a lot of disadvantages, but the advantages weigh the disadvantages out. So you can access it anywhere and on any device that has that supports those um, clouds. Like access in a way, meaning if you are making use of Google Drive right now and you save this document to the Google Drive, right? Then you can access it from a different computer on that Google Drive without having to copy and paste. I remember back in the day, you would take a USB, plug the USB into your computer, copy the document onto the USB and then plug it into another computer. And if that USB got corrupted, then all of your documents would disappear, but not with a cloud using Google Drive or OneDrive. There's little to no risk of your document going missing or being corrupted. There are, however, risks such as maybe someone getting into your Google Drive and changing things, but that's rare as it is password protected. Okay, but it also allows for collaboration, meaning children can collaborate with you on the document, which we'll show you later on when we are creating the HyperDoc. And it's free to use if you have a Google account or a Microsoft account. Most of us have Google accounts because we have to create a Gmail account and most of us have Outlook accounts. So it's there for us to use and we should use it. OK. But so dynamic content refers to content that changes. So content that has to be hosted online, which I've just spoken about. Content that's hosted on Google Suite or Office 365. Those are applications that create dynamic content. But not just Google Suite and Office 365, Google Drive and OneDrive creates dynamic content. So it refers to content that can be changed over time without having to physically take down the document and uploading a new document. That is the future, essentially. Right. It will save us so much time as an educator to just basically go into that document, change a few things, and then just exit the document. And the great thing that I've learned from using Google Drive is that it automatically saves your progress. So no more having to press the save button each time and then crying if your internet or your laptop gets a sudden interruption and all your work being gone. Unless you are IT guru, most of their work is gone forever. Right. So now that we understand dynamic content, right? How should we share resources? So the one way is sharing via links. So why should we share with links? It's a great way of creating access. Mobile devices work well with cloud-hosted resources. As I've said previously, a lot of the learners do not have access to laptops or desktops. They only have the smartphones. Most people, I'm saying most because not everyone, has access to a, to a smartphone, which will work well with cloud-hosted resources as they all come with the latest technology and applications that can help open up those resources. And you sharing a link means that you are sharing dynamic content as that content can be changed over time but that link will not change. So there are two tricks that I would love to show you today regarding using links. The one is a link shortener and the other one is using a QR code, right? So when you are sharing links, these are the two ways that you can share the links, not limited to, but the one of the two ways that I feel are most useful to educators. So let's start with a link shortener. So what is a link shortener? So a link shortener reduces the length of the URL. So basically their website. Okay, that's something easier to remember, but it also helps to track activity. Right, so track activity meaning who accesses the link and how many people actually access the link at what time. Okay, there are different websites that you can use to create a shortened link, such as Bitly, Google, not Google, but I'll Google with a dot. I'll show you now when I demonstrate. 
and tinyurl.com. That's also useful when links need to be retyped. But a disclaimer that most applications allow you to change text and images to a link. So therefore, using link shortener would not be necessary. This is Bitly. So all you have to do the same as you type the ePortal, you would type in Bitly. And the great thing is most of the um, features are for free. There are is unfortunately an upgrade available that will cost money, but the free version is good enough for high school or primary school or even the lower grades. Right. So the first thing that you would do is go here to the top to the left hand corner and press create. Then you would go to the one that says link. And will open up into create new. Right. Then you will go find a resource from your WCD portal. So I'm going to take the garden of love again. And then you have to copy the URL code here above. So then you would right click, right click on your mouse or open up those different options. Then all you have to do is press copy. Or if you are computer savvy, you just have to press Control C. It will copy the link automatically. And then you just have to paste it here in this block that says destination. Right, I'll do that again just to show you what I did was to copy the link. Right, so QR code. So QR code stands for a quick response code. It's a type of barcode that can be easily read using a cellular device. It's useful for hard copy documents, but also if you want to add web-based content, so content that is on the internet. Right. It can also be used for icebreakers or breakaway activities in your lessons or presentations. I know it is difficult in a classroom to have a QR code, but if you are creating a workshop for your educators or an after school class or a Saturday classes where you want to break the ice or you want to make it interactive, a QR code is a brilliant way to actually instigate that. And also, if you are having parent meetings or a huge group um, meeting with the parents or even just with staff, then the QR code is a great way to actually create polls or to display information to the parents, especially with load shedding where projectors and a lot of the projection tools will be down. They could look at the document on their cell phone without you having to actually show it on the projector. But please note, a QR code is not a clickable link like most of you have noticed. You do need a mobile device to scan that code, QR code. So we're going to use Bitly. We're going to follow the same steps where we press create. But instead of pressing link, we're going to press QR code. And then we'll follow the same steps where we'll copy the URL and then paste it in the desired destination. Copy the URL code. Right, and then it will give you a preview of the QR code. And then again, the title. Right, this one I'll shorten as well because it's a bit too long. I'll just say poetry. Extra notes. And then Right. Then with the QR code, you do not need a custom of pack because obviously it's not going to be a link that you will be accessing or will be an image. Right. So once you have created all of this, you will just press create QR code. That one's also created already. So let's take another one quickly. Take Funeral Blues, for example. Right, and then we'll press create QR code. And it will create a QR code in a few seconds. 
right? So you can either copy the image and paste it in a group, or you can download the image and then print it 50 or 60,000 times, and the QR code will not change. It will scan perfectly each time because it is an image. I think the exciting part of the lesson where we will be working together to create a hyper document. Okay, can everyone see my screen? I think so. Okay. Yes, we can see the screen. Thank you, Vazira. So a hyper document is an interactive document filled with resources to help students, educators, or even the common individual. Right? So hyper document is basically a word document that's filled with resources and different links to resources. And that's what we go to collaborate together with. So this activity is to show how you can collaborate with your learners to create a document with filled with resources that they can use, that their peers can use, and that at the end of the day that they can start their own ones with their peers and their friends. All right? So if you are working together, you can either scan the QR code on your phone and open up a new document, or you can do it together with me. So you would open up a new tab. Okay. And then you would go to this waffle here in the right hand corner. I do like to call it a waffle because it has nine dots and it looks like a waffle and I'm a foodie and I love food. Okay. Then you would click on the waffle. All right. And then you will go to docs, which stands for documents. Then you open it up. And then it will open up a Google document. All right. So Google documents the same as a Word document, just better as it saves it automatically to your Google Drive or to your cloud. Okay. So then it will allow you to actually have dynamic content that can be changed over time and that your learners can collaborate with you on. So once you have done all of these steps, you have started a new tab, you have gone to the waffle and pressed on the docs application, then you will go to start a new blank document. And it should open up a new blank untitled document. Okay, so everyone still with me? Yes, we are. Okay, great stuff. So, the great thing about a Google document is that it will automatically save your content. I know I'm saying this again, but I'm emphasizing so that you don't have to go here into the corner with a Word document, press save 50 times each time you have typed something new. Right? So, if you go in the top left hand corner, you can automatically rename the document. So it's a bit different from a Microsoft Word document where you first had to save the document before you could name it. With a Google Doc, you can automatically rename it. So we're going to call this HyperDoc. Let's say poetry, because we've been doing a lot of poetry in the session. And then you'll see automatically in a, next to the hyperdoc poetry or automatically say save to your drive. So your drive is your Google Drive. So if you have a Gmail account, then you do have a, a Google Drive, which I'll demonstrate in a few minutes where to find your Google Drive. Okay. Then Google Docs works the same as a Word document where it has all the same features such as font size, bold, italics, but it has a couple more features that can help you create an interactive document. Fortunately, today we're not going to go in depth for all of them. We are just going to create a hyperdoc for our learners. Right? So I'm going to create a heading. So the same with a Word document. You can select heading and then apply heading one. I'll make it bold, underline, italics. Maybe I'll make it a different color so it can stand out. Ooh, a bit too bright. There we go. Hyperdoc for poetry. 
and as you can see there, it automatically saves my progress. Okay, is everyone still with me? I guess so. Then, now that we have created our document and you do all your fancy things and all your fancy headings, we want to paste our links. Right? There's three ways that you can paste a link on a document. The one way is to go to insert, scroll down to link, and then it will open up. Or you can go to the paper clip here in the top right hand corner. Or you can use a shortcut if you are computer savvy, control K, which would open up this tab right here. All right, then you'll see in this blue borderline box, you would have to paste your link. So let's take one of those particular links that we have created. Right. So copy link address. Then we go to our hyperdoc and then we'll paste it in this box here. And then all you have to do is press apply and the new link will be pasted on the document. Right. But it does not stop there. If you scroll over onto the link and you press it, it will automatically, automatically pop up. But the great thing is you can edit the link. Not edit the link itself, but you can edit the title that will be displayed on your document. So this link does not really tell us much about the document that we are accessing. Right? And I want the learners to exactly know what document they are accessing. So I'm going to change the name. So I'll call it poetry analysis. And then all you have to do is press apply again. And it will change into poetry analysis. But I must say that if you do change or alter the link under the text it will obviously change the destination that they will be directed to and it might show a error when you do right so only change the one that says text right up here to change what is happening on your document okay everyone still okay okay great so as i said earlier on the s AMR method stands for substitution, argumentation, modification, and redefinition. Right. So this is basically the method that we're using to try to bring in technology into the classroom. So bringing technology in the classroom will not be an overnight trick. Right. It's going to take a few steps and it's going to take some struggle pains to get there. But in the end, we want the learners to actually start using technology to do tasks that was not conceivable a few years ago. We've seen that happen, especially with the COVID pandemic, where most of the teaching had to be done online, right? There was some struggles in the beginning, but now that we are back to face-to-face -face teaching, most of us are still using those methods to interact with our learners, right? So we went through the stages of substituting, argumentation, modification, and then the redefinition. Let's start at the bottom, substitution. So this is when technology acts as a direct substitute with no functional change. So you substitute something in the classroom with technology, but it doesn't have a functional change in the classroom. So everything will still basically be the same. The only difference is that you are using this small techno technological tool. The next step after substituting will be argumentation. This is where technology will now have a functional improvement in the classroom. Right? So instead of it just being a direct substitute, it now has an improvement in the classroom. It's improving certain things that are being done in the classroom. Right? And then that obviously will lead into the next step, which is modification, which will allow for a significant task design, a redesign. So basically change the way you do things in the classroom or basically help you to streamline certain um, content or certain ways that you are teaching or help the learner to do their homework. It might also change the way that you teach the learners, your teaching method. 
before you maybe displayed the content in the classroom, but now you are sending the content to the learners the night before or two days before the time for them to go over the content. And then all you'll be doing in the classroom is discussing that content, right? And then the pinnacle of this method, methodology would be redefinition, where the learners themselves will start creating their own tasks or using the different methods that you have taught them or you are demonstrating with them, with their fellow peers and teaching it or laying it onto the next person, to their family, to their friends, to their parents, or to their other mates at different schools that do not use these methods. And now you're wondering how does this go hand in hand with the e-portal? Okay. So let's apply it to the e-portal. So as I said, the bottom would be substitution. So you as the teacher, you find the resource on the e-portal and you display it to your learners on the projector. So you're not changing anything, right? You're just merely substituting the same way as you would be writing the notes on the, the board. You are now projecting those same notes that you were, took down from the e-portal on the projector, right? Which will save you time and it will help with your classroom discipline. Because we all know once you turn your back to write a few notes on the board, that's when the um, learners become rowdy or they start to project. Right? And then after a while, you see that this method or this way is very useful. You start to use ICT tools to access, store and share content on the e-portal directly to learners. So once you have now mastered the e-portal, you start using the cloud, as I like to say, to basically store content and share content with your learners. So you went from just static content over to dynamic content, right? That can be changed and that you can basically use to change your teaching strategy, but also to help those learners that didn't really understand in the classroom and those learners that enjoy working on their own. Right, so this is the answer you as an educator in your teaching style, but after a while it will affect the learner, which we'll get to the next stage, which is modification. This is where you use your ICT tools to create a hyperdoc, as we've done now, with links to content on the e-portal. So we move straight from just substituting in the classroom right down to creating your own hyperdoc with links. Right, as I have said, and I reiterate, it won't be an overnight success. It will take some growing pains and it will take some complications, but in the end, it will only benefit the learner, but it will also benefit you as an educator. So it'll help you organize things better and it will take away that drastic paperwork that we all hate, especially the admin, right? And then we'll get to the last stage, which is redefinition, where the learners will start to discover their own resources on the e-portal and create their own hyper documents to share with their classmates. So after mastering all of these steps, they just discovered that all oh, the e-portal has some great resources and one of their mates is maybe struggling with the poetry analysis. They themselves will go onto the e-portal, create a hyper document with all the resources that they have used paste it there and then create a collaborative effort for their classmates to join in, right? So it will also promote classwork, it will promote teamwork, and it will help those students that is a bit strong in the class to help those that's lagging behind. The Wait Collect is a digital curation platform, which allows organization of resources by educators plus students, okay? So it's basically like an hyper document, but just a platform for the hyper document. I'm going to show you quickly how to access it. So if you press on the link here in the chat, it will automatically take you to the Wakelet website. I'm just going to share my screen quickly to show you the website. Right. So after you have signed into Wakelet and you've just started your email address and all of those things, the great thing about Wakelet is it's completely free, right? And it's unlimited to use. So it's not the same as Bitly where you have to pay for upgrades. Everything is free, right? I don't want to touch too long on this, but I've already created a collection 
So a collection is basically like a type of document that has the different links to the different resources that you would like to share with your students. Your students will create an account and they will have access to all your collections. Okay, but another way that they can specifically go to your collection is if you just go into mine, if you press the share button here in the right top hand corner and you can share it in different ways by copying the link, as you can see here, copying the link, sending a join code, a QR code using Google Classroom or even displaying it on Teams, which is a great platform, right? So this is my small wakelet that I have created previously. As you can see here, it will basically list all the different links that you want the learners to have. Okay, so think of it almost like a uh, Google Forms, but just for different links to resources. All right, and then another way this is a great platform is that you can search for different collections related to the type of topic that you want to display to the learners. So you would either go to collections and you type it up or you press search or you could just explore different topics or different resources that people have pasted. OK, so as you can see mine, I pasted previously, I created a Bitly code for my Spark notes on Sonnet 130. This is currently what I'm teaching my grade 11. And I wanted them to have quick access to more analysis and summary of the poem. Idea and so it works the same as pasting a link on the HyperDoc. All you have to do is just press on the link and it will automatically direct you to the site of your desired resource, as you can see here. So it is a great tool to use, and it can allow you to create a newsletter that you can send to parents. So it's not just a collaboration tool, it can also be a way to actually send communication to all parents and organize all your bookmarks and your resources. All right. so if you do have time and you have time to play around and you do have resources, plethora of resources that you would want to share, Wakelet is one way to share it, but if you do not want to go through all of these efforts, then the HyperDoc is another one. 